No, but definitely VJs and anchors and uh, TV presenters and all the channels must be playing a, a part in, well, let's imagine a 15-year-old boy or 15-year-old girl or 10-year-old boy watching the program. Definitely, I think they would empathize or you know identify with um, anchors to some extent. Positive, po possibly also because we're more like the guys next door, as against film stars, who are slightly aspirational. We're more like just regular guys. They could just be that, you know. They could be Rahul Khanna or Cyrus or Rakesh. Well, Rakesh is very pretty. <laughs> I just mean that, you know, we're possibly easier to identify with. College guys, you know what I'm saying? Jeans, shirt, mic. So it's something they can identify with to, uh, as far as the youth go. Why do you think MTV has had to Indianize? Had to Indianize? Well, it's simple. Um, music is basically universal, let's be honest, okay? I, I, I like the Beatles, okay, me as a person. But that doesn't mean that the rest of the music is not good. You know, music is universal. So as far as Indianizing goes, uh, they came down, they looked at the market, they realized people listen to this kind of music, and so they're just following what is the uh, accepted procedure, which is like make people happy, because we are there to make people happy. What they want dictates what we play, not what we play dictates them. To some extent, yeah, we're, fashion and all is controlled by media, definitely. But ultimately, it's people. Consumer is king, and that's just the policy. They want to hear this, we play it. Music is music. It makes no difference to me, you, and most normal people. What does MTV mean to you? Not as a VJ. Good money. Good money. MTV means good money to me, a future for my parents, for my wives, one, two, three, four, five that I will have. But um, I think generally MTV, basically, let's face it, we're an entertainment channel. That is the bottom line. We're here to entertain. So if you want to hear a certain type of music, we have to do our research and play that type of music. Uh, at the same time, we realize we're a youth channel. We're never going to run away from that. That's our, uh, that's our focus all over the world. So things like AIDS, problems with sex, drug abuse, these things we can address, you know or rather people like us should address. So we, we stay with that, but we don't make it too heavy because we are, we are an entertainment channel. We're here to just make sure you have a good time, listen to music, and that's it. Love, peace, harmony, that's the kind of thing we talk about. Then I go and beat up somebody, but <laughs> that's separate. Not just thinking of the fashion, but even the morals, the attitude, the way a person thinks, the way you know, say things. Mm -hmm. Do you think that influences today's youth, do you think? I, again, I suppose it does to some extent, but um, See, everybody's an adult in the end, you know, we can't just put uh, point fingers at people and say because he saw Rahul Khanna behave like this, he's doing that. There was an ad, if you remember, uh, I won't name the brand, where a boy did a kind of dangerous stunt and somebody died in UP trying it. But now, you know, I mean, that's uh, families and adults, they have to realize that they have to take responsibility, not just keep blaming the media and say, you know, you're going to, you know, uh, decide what my son is going to do or is going to become. There is definitely a role we play, but I would say it's not the dominant role. The dominant role ultimately will come from uh, from family, from education, from your environment directly. If you're left astray and you sit there with just one TV for the rest of your life, then yeah, that's your only influence. But let's hope that's not the way it is. It's everything. Do you think kids today can relate better to an MTV than to their, maybe their parents' attitudes? I, I think they can uh, narrate to us as an age group. Let's all be honest again. If I was a teacher, probably I'd be able to make a better impact with certain kids than um, a teacher who's 60 years old and who's got a very stylized way of teaching, you know. Here's the lecture. Let's go back to our own years in college. They have a lecture board, they give you notes, you write it down and everybody goes to sleep. You know, let, let, that's the honest truth. Then we cram and then we come and give the paper. I think we would be able to talk. We'll talk in our language. I'm not saying you have to use four-letter words. That's not our language. I just mean we'll talk in this kind of easy way, you know, whatever language not being Hindi, French or English or anything. I just mean in a certain way that the young people can express themselves. And they'll feel more comfortable to talk to us. Their problems, if they have drug problems, alcohol problems, if they're having peer pressure, if they have problems with sex, if they have problems getting a date, they can at least come and talk to... They can't talk to a 60-year-old guy or a 60-year-old woman if, he's a man, uh, if it's a young kid. You know, so I think it's important that we bridge that gap. We can play the part of... I wouldn't say elder brother, but someone who, who you can relate to, you can talk to. And let's also remember that I personally don't think I'm the kind of person who should sit around telling people what to do, you know. Do you think MTV will change Indian culture in some way? Impossible. Uh, I'm, I'm a student of history, I'm an amateur student of history, and I really believe if you look at India, the formation of India actually happened when in British times we had like North India under the Mughals, and if you go back, you know, the different principalities, etc. India has been a fantastic country where everybody comes in and absorbs. You know, and the moment we get this complex off our shoulder that you are destroying, so let's go back to Sanskritization, or you are destroying, let's go back to Urdu. That's all bullshit, to use a modern uh, phrase. Because what happens is, the more we absorb, the more we grow. So we shouldn't say that, you know, say, English is a bad influence on us, or say, um, uh, the Mughals were a bad period. So that's all nonsense. They all came in, they had their good and bad points, and now we've absorbed them, and we must use that 
to become wiser and better people because let's be honest again if you put an Indian and I, I am such an Indian with say an American or a Frenchman anywhere in the world we are much more worldly conscious than they are they're very insular in their thinking they're intelligent people also but look at us we've had such great educations those who uh, Indians who had education we have great educations I feel fantastic I think we must accept that we are always a, a, a culture which is a melting pot so many different people Persians Greeks Central Asian tribes um, uh, Dravidians I mean Arabs everybody you know, Portuguese uh, Dutch English and now the, the Americans with MTV everybody's coming here so we should just say yeah come in welcome enter enjoy and I just think we'll grow more and we shouldn't have a chip on the shoulder and say like you know no you know, no, get away, go away. We should, we should say, come. We take what we want and throw out what we don't want, but we will grow. That's what I feel. To sum it all up, uh, what do you think MTV means to this? Initially, it would mean music, which is the bottom line, music they like, music they identify with, and uh, I wouldn't use the word escapist, but I'll use the word entertainment, entertainment of some kind, which is uh, their entertainment. Um, since we are a youth channel, we, we give them a kind of, I wouldn't say meaning again, I don't know what, what the right word is, but they belong, there's a sense of belonging, this is where we belong, MTV, we, we can relate with the people there, they're playing the music we like, we are on the channel, my shows, MTVU and some of the other shows focus on, on kids, you know, it's, it's their channel literally. So I think that sense of belonging and identification is definitely there. After a period of time, as they grow older or after a period of time, um, it'll probably mean more. You know, maybe then, then a guy who's a hardened listener will listen to a few messages on AIDS, will listen. I mean, even if one person listens to our messages once in a while, that's important. Listen, we're not trying to preach. No one's going to teach you, you know, stop sex, don't drink, don't do drugs. It's, you do what you want to. All we're saying is this is what can happen and just think about it. That's all. That's it. Let me talk more. <laughs>